Hello everyone and welcome to an absolute masterclass from round three of the 2022 uh, Air Things Masters. It's Andrei Yesipenko versus Magnus Carlsen and it's, uh, well, uh, uh, it's been a while since we've seen a game this uh, good and uh, this precise. Uh, it features the two knights defense and, uh, well, you, you guys will enjoy it immensely. It's very short, or rather, not maybe very short, uh, it's like 45 moves, but the... Um, uh, it, it's just a completely lost position <laughs> very, very uh, early on in the game, uh, which is always impressive against the world champion. So let's see uh, how, how this played out. Yespenko with the white pieces opens with e4. We have e5 by Magnus, knight to f3, knight to c6, and the bishop to c4 now, uh, asking for the for the um, uh, Joko Piano to go for the Evans Gambit most likely, but Magnus denies it and he goes for knight to f6. He goes for the two knights defense, uh, and now even though knight to g5 is everyone's favorite idea, uh, here we have d3, the so-called modern bishops opening, bishop to e7 and both players castle. So castles, castles, and now uh, it's uh, who knows what and, and how how well. Uh, rook to e1 by far the most popular idea. Yespenko already going for a, a very nice sideline uh, with knight to c3, d6, and now uh, the very early a4. And now it's very hard to say. I mean, this, is, this has so many branches if Magnus knows by heart what's... Um, uh, what's going on here? He goes a5, which is again a standard reply in many of these um, uh, uh, well uh, positions. And now rook to e1. We have knight to b4, uh, as uh, well you've played a4, so you, uh, there's no way for for white to challenge the knight on b4 for the moment. Although when this knight moves, you can always play c3. And now knight to e2, uh, uh, already preparing the very early um, uh, c3 push. And now we have bishop to e6. Interestingly. Uh, the position has been reached uh, in, in uh, last year uh, in the European Team Championship where Bishop to G4 was played in, in a game between Van Forest uh, and um, uh, Ivan Ivanishevic uh, in the, like I said, European Team Championship. Uh, Van Forest won that game, but here we have Bishop to E6 and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Yespenko deals with this. We have Bishop captures on E6. Uh, this will double black spawns, but okay, uh, it's not a problem. If anything, you will have, uh, well, future support for uh, for your d5 advancement knight to g3 uh, continuing development and now knight back to c6 uh, as magnus is most likely preparing to push d5 he wants his e5 pawn nicely defended so c3 the knight would get kicked away uh, either way and now is pink also preparing d4 and here knight to d7 and this is a bit of an odd move here magnus uh, might play something like queen to d7 to um, uh, develop the queen to connect the rooks and then maybe uh, to figure out where to go from there. But he plays knight to d7, uh, which is not that odd. But after bishop to e3, he retreats the knight with knight to f6. So maybe knight to d7 was a mouse slip. Maybe he intended queen to d7. It's hard to say, although it's not easy to explain this maneuver. But okay, now uh, you might say, okay, but now you have the two weaknesses here. Maybe queen to b3 can be played and we can exploit this. The problem is, uh, even though queen to b3 is an excellent move, you don't really get to win anything because after queen d7 and it, yes the queen does belong on d7 you can't capture on b7 because rook f to b8 and the queen is trapped so uh, you, you can play queen to b3 you just don't win any pawns so instead after knight f6 d4 by Estipenko, uh e captures on d4 c captures and now d5 by magnus finally pushing that pawn uh, and now before advancing the pawn to e5 first knight to g5 the e6 is a backwards pawn it's a very weak pawn and now magnus will have to defend it finally uh, by playing queen to d7 as uh, he most likely intended so e5 uh, challenging the knight now and where, where do you put the knight there really isn't a good square because both of these knights are now uh, guarding the e4 square so you have to go back knight back to e8 uh, and now uh, ispenko wants to bring more firepower like queen to g sorry queen to g4 would be nice going after that e6 pawn but this would allow magnus to just trade for example captures bishop captures queen f7 and it's um uh, well, uh, all of a sudden, not so not so bad for black. Uh, but yes, Benko just brings the knight back. Knight to h3, and he will play queen g4 and bring this knight over to f4 to go after the e6 weakness. Uh, and Magnus uh, will, will have a hard time uh, stopping this. So here Magnus plays rook to a6. He wants to play rook to b6 and go after this b2 pawn. So activating his rook. And now queen g4. As planned, we have rook to b6 by Magnus going after the b2 pawn. And now knight to f4 asking Magnus 
Magnus. Uh, what do you play here and how do you defend your e6 weakness? Uh, and uh, Magnus doesn't defend it, Magnus just captured on b2. The other option is just play knight to d8 and for the moment defend it and try to play this passive position. Uh, which might be better, but in a rapid game, uh, how better is a passive position, it's it's hard to say. So instead after knight to f4 we have rook captures on b2 by Magnus and now uh, queen captures on e6. This comes with check and you have to capture otherwise, you're just gonna uh, lose the queen on d7, so captures, captures, attacking the rook, rook f7, and now rook e to c1, paralyzing the knight here, if the knight moves then the c7 pawn it will become very vulnerable, so here g6, uh, and now rook a to b1, uh, forcing the rook either to move or to uh, capture on b1, and then we will have another rook on b1 going after the b7 pawn, so really, really, uh, pretty much completely paralyzing uh, all, all of, um, well, all, the entire board really. So here rook captures on b1, rook captures attacking the b7 pawn. Uh, we have knight to b4, so we don't have to uh, defend the pawns. Now Now the, the knight is blocking the attack, and now comes knight to e2. Uh, and here it's a very, very difficult position for Magnus, not a lot, of, uh, not, not a lot to play for here, uh, but it still can be. Uh, if if played maybe to a perfection, but here Magnus played c6 and now uh, it's just a, a positionally lost game, but you have to find the absolute best move and that is, well, that's often what it takes to take down a world champion. So feel free to pause the video here and try to spot this idea uh, Yispenko may or may not have played uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, unimaginably uh, difficult move to spot. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to all the way to h6. That's the good stuff. And finding this move, well, that's not easy. Asipenkov played this fairly quickly. Uh, the idea is that you have to prevent this knight from coming to g7. If you play something else, let's say you try knight to f4, uh, now we're going to play knight g7, and already black's position is a little bit easier to play. For example, captures, captures, yes, you can get knight e6 check, king goes back, and it's not great for black, but it's not lost. So Yispenko found the, the very difficult bishop to h6, and now what do you play? Without knight to g7, what moves are there? You can't push pawns, you can't move the knight because the b7 pawn hangs, uh, the knight has nowhere to go, all of the squares are taken, what do you have? Uh, can the bishop go somewhere? Can the, can the rook go somewhere? You could play bishop to f8, just uh, attacking, but that means also giving up the exchange, so not much uh, fun there. So here Magnus tries rook f5, he wants to play rook to h5 and kick away the bishop, but Yesipenko just stops it, he plays uh, g4. Uh, also uh, also maybe uh, interesting was f4, but g4 gets the job done as well. Uh, we have rook to f3 and now bishop back to e3, preventing the rook from going anywhere and now we're pre uh, preparing a uh, knight to f4. When the knight jumps to f4, the rook will be trapped on f3 and then king g2 will just, uh, well, attack the the rook will have to be given up for, for the knight or the or for the bishop or the knight. So here we have king to f7. If you try knight g7 now, yes, you can, now you can play it because the bishop is on e3. Uh, we're just going to capture and after king captures knight f4. Like we mentioned, the, the, then we're going to win material. So instead, after bishop to e3, we have king to f7. Uh, also, you could try uh, uh, rook to f7 because, uh, well, we, we are trying to save our rook. Then we're going to play knight to f4 and after finally knight to g7. Now we play this captures, captures, knight e6, check and after king g8, f4. And now it's a little bit different. It's similar to the position that we've discussed, only uh, here we have f4 and g4 included and that of course is much, much better for white. So okay, instead in the actual game after bishop e3, king to f7 was played, now comes knight 6 to f4, uh, challenging th this rook here. Here now we are ready to play king to g2, so g5, uh, Magnus tries to, uh, to, to save the rook somehow, knight to h5, and now king to g8, uh, freeing up the f8 square for the rook, so king to g2, and now rook to f8, and okay, uh, in this uh, line of events, the rook has been saved, but it's not going to be easy to hold on, because of h4, uh, and now you are just threatening to win a pawn. If pawn captures here, then we're just going to play bishop h6, attack the rook, then f4, f5, and there's no stopping those pawns. So instead, Magnus played h6, uh, 
time to defend the g5 pawn, but now knight e to g3, just mounting the pressure. Uh, the knight can come to f5, then to h6, but putting pressure on e7. So here, king f7 by Magnus, now knight to f5. Rook to h8, guarding the h6 pawn, uh, but it is simply not enough. There is too much pressure, knight captures on e7, king captures, and of course, h captures on g5. And now everything falls apart. We have h captures, bishop captures on g5 with check, king to f7, and now f4. Uh, we have rook to g8, uh, trying to stop the, the advancement because the bishop hangs, but now just uh, king to g3. We are bringing our king into the game. Knight c7 trying to activate the knight, but now knight to f6. Attacking the rook, rook g7, bishop to h6, again attacking the rook, rook to g6, and now g5. Uh, preparing to bring the king into the game, also f5 will be very scary. So knight to e6, and now uh, Magnus uh, will. Uh, doesn't really have any, any more moves because f5 was played. Uh, and I believe here Magnus resigned because rook captures on f6 is the last move in the game. So maybe Magnus just picked it up and said, ah, whatever, you know, just place it anywhere. So may maybe he resigned here, maybe he resigned after capturing. But uh, uh, all in all, uh, it was in this position on move 44 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. And what a two knights nice defense masterclass, or rather uh, against a two knights nice defense masterclass by Andrei Yesipenko. Uh, because after, uh, for example, captures on f6, there's not much. You can capture on d4, but look at the pawns here. They're just monsters. You rob the exchange, so there's not much. Let's say king g4, b5, uh, and whatever now. Bishop e3, we can attack the knight, knight moves, we're going to play king g5, and now we don't even care, <laughs> well, you can give up this, then e6, check king to e8, uh, the pawns are just too strong, you can play whatever, rook h1, checkmate is coming, pawns are coming, so doesn't really matter, uh, it's completely winning for Yespenko. So of course, uh, here or here, uh, Magnus resigned the game, and what a brilliant victory. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be another another um, Gioco Piano or, or Gioco Pianissimo, but in the end it was the two nice defense uh, and it was a very, very impressive one, uh, showing that what a what a dangerous opening it can still be, regardless of how much theory, you know, because Magnus really knows a lot of theory, especially against such old openings like, like the two nice defense, he probably knows all the theory, but not, not really all the theory, because, uh, well, Yespenko chose a really, really... Uh, nice sideline here going for knight c3 instead of the main rook to e1 and then after this going for the very early a4 and there are um, maybe a handful of games with this exact same move order so uh, that was enough to take magnus uh, magnus out uh, and also of course he had to play uh, you know a <laughs> great chess after after all of this uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank uh, oralt uh, lucifer 45 non-commercial ep dale cook uh, onward the 95 percent american flag numa and the david kimura for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of the air things masters uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and if you have any questions against air things uh, do use hashtag air things and just ask the question in the comments uh, see you soon